question says that a child sits on the ground next to the remote control toy car at time t equals zero and the car begins to move in a straight line directly away from the child so the car is moving in a straight line there is uh, uh, the variation with time t of the velocity of the car along this line is shown in this figure so we can see in this diagram uh, the graphical representation of how velocity varies uh, as time progresses forward and this represents the journey of this child the car's horn continually emits uh, sounds of frequency 925 hertz between time t equals 0 and time t equals 6 seconds. So this is uh, the entire journey from t equals 0 to 6 seconds. The speed of sound in the air is given to us as 338 meters per second. Now describe qualitatively the variation, if any, in the frequency of the sound heard by the child that was emitted from the car horn. Now they're saying do that for t equals 0 to 2 seconds. From t equals 0 to 2 seconds, we clearly see that the speed is increasing the velocity is increasing in this direction so if the velocity is increasing we know that v is equal to f lambda right now or you can write this as v is equal to f times any distance or displacement that is covered uh, now this thing says that if the speed uh, is constant the distance that is tra traveling which is the area under this graph is also constant throughout uh, or even in this part uh, from zero to two the distance is fixed uh, if the speed is increasing, then the frequency should decrease, right, according to this relation to keep the constancy uh, intact. So, therefore, the frequency will decrease because speed increases in this region, right, from 0 to 2 seconds. And for the next part, from time t equals 4 to 6 seconds, from 4 to 6 seconds, this is 4 and this is 6, the speed is decreasing. So the argument almost remains the same, but it's in uh, reversed. So the speed is decreasing, hence the frequency should increase because speed decreases from 4 to 6 seconds. All right. Now, the next part says determine the frequency to three significant figures of the sound that is heard by the child that was emitted from the car at time t equals 3 seconds. So first of all, at time t equals 3 seconds, what's the speed of this thing, of the car? The speed of the car is approximately 12, right? So it is, if you read this like this, this is 11 and 12. So it's 12 meters per second. So at t equals 3, the speed uh, is the speed of the car. Now the car is the source, right? Because the horn is coming from the car. So the source here is the car. So this is the speed of the source, which is 12 meters per second. We know to uh, in this case, the child will hear a different frequency, while the source would have emitted a different frequency. This is due to the Doppler's effect in sound waves. And uh, we can get the observed frequency by the child, which is observed as the product of the frequency that is coming from the source times the velocity of the sound divided by the velocity of the sound plus the velocity of the source. Now, here we know most of the things. Uh, the frequency of the source is given as 925 hertz. So we'll just plug that in, 925 hertz. The speed of sound is 338 meters per second divided by 338 meters per second plus the speed which is 12 meters per second of the car and if you do the math this gives you about 893 hertz so the frequency that is observed by the child of the car horn is 893 hertz and as you can see the frequency has decreased from 925 to 893 hertz at time 3 equals uh, t equals 3 seconds now let's move to the next part which says that determine the time taken for the sound emitted at time t equals four seconds to travel to the child so the sound that was emitted at t equals four seconds and then it travels to the child so how much time does it take for the sound which was emitted from the car at t equals four seconds to cover its distance to the child uh, we want to find that time now it's simple because we can figure out uh, we, if we have the speed, if we can figure out the distance, then we can easily find the time. And the distance is straightforward because they're saying from 4, uh, this thing, to this thing. Uh, uh, my mistake, uh, the, the, it, this area of this uh, under the graph is basically a trapezoid, right? And we know we can compute the area of a trapezoid by adding two parallel sides and multiplying by the height of the trapezoid and then dividing it by two. So we can find that distance, the total distance, as one by two into the uh, parallel sides are two and four 
and the dist height is 12, right? So we have 2 plus 4 and the height is 12 meters per second. Now, this gives you the total distance covered as 3, 6 meters, 36 meters. And now you have the distance, right? And we know that the speed is equal to distance covered by time taken, which means that the speed is just 36 meters divided by t, but the speed of the sound is 338 meters per second. So this solving for time gives you about 0 0.107 seconds, which means that it takes 0 0.107 seconds for the sound that was emitted at this point, t equals 4 seconds, to travel back to the child.